Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. Today our assignment is to repair a vinyl seat in a Corvette. And while the repair itself is simple, down and dirty, we're going to use the occasion today to talk about how much heat you can use on a vinyl repair. I've recently been asked this by someone new in the business and uh, I think it's a very good question. I've had this question raised in the past and I've seen several failures uh, by people not applying enough heat. So this would be a good subject for a video and we're going to address that with this repair today. So are you ready for that? Let's get to work. Automotive vinyl is typically heavy duty and has a knit backing which adds support. Therefore you can use a high heat setting. On the other hand, cheap unsupported vinyl like you would find in household chairs or door panels will shrink just like this shrink tubing vinyl. So it won't take much heat at all. In this Corvette vinyl we find that the backing is still there but the vinyl is brittle. It's a cheap vinyl and it's lost all of its plasticizer so it's very hard and therefore cracked. To get it to lie down we will need extensive heat. But in order not to burn through the backing we're going to put some vinyl repair compound in the cracks. So the vinyl repair compound will act like a heat shield to protect the knit backing. Folks getting started in the business might think about raising the temperature of the compound to about 350 degrees in order to cure it. But really we need much more heat than that to flatten the original vinyl. We want to melt the original vinyl if possible. So as you can see with this gun I'm using the highest setting which is 1160 Fahrenheit. The repair compound is smoking, but I cannot stop now. I have to add even more heat to soften this factory vinyl. Now I'm pressing the graining pad to try to match the contour of the seat, not any further. And a double layer of pad will protect your hand from the heat. So you can see that the greatest amount of heat would be applied on our first application. Thereafter we'll have thinner layers of compound to work with and so we won't need quite as much heat. So I've put down one layer of repair compound and this is to accept some mesh. I'm going to cut some reinforcing mesh to cover the top of this repair. It will form a bridge across all of these cracks so that in the end each crack won't be visible. This will smooth it out nicely. And we'll fill in some more compound from the top side. So we're making a sandwich. And as you can see I'm having to use my guitar pick to keep this stitch line clear as I go along. This looks like a really nice base to cure. We're going to stay with the same heat setting. The dwell time may change a little bit, but uh, while you're applying this much heat, never let your eyes leave the repair. You'll watch the repair, first of all, turn dry, and then it'll start to shine as it gets hot enough. You want it to get almost liquefied so that you can control it when you apply the pressure with the graining pad. And the more liquefied it gets, the better the grain will be. And it's almost impossible to tell our progress without putting first a little bit of color. And if you've watched this channel, you know that I'm a big fan of putting a guide coat. 
the guide coat will reveal every place where you need a little extra work. And in this case, that edge needs a little fill in. When is it hot enough? You'll have to watch. You'll see it get shiny. You'll see it smoke a little bit and just push it a little bit more. There you go. And we're going to take care of this bottom edge as well. I'm also a fan of only repairing a small spot at a time. That way you'll have greater control over your final repair. Here again, the heat will turn it clear. It'll smoke. Bring it up just a little bit more. And now it should receive a grain quite well. This is a very thin layer here, so we shouldn't expect to have too much dwell time. And as every repair is a combination of judgment calls, we're just going to take this a little further here and finesse that edge a little bit. And I got a nice swipe that time. So that was a nice, thin, leveling layer right there, I think. It won't take too much time with the heat. Jiggling the grain in there a little bit. That looks good. So I'm attacking one more spot here. What I'm going to do, though, is heat more than the spot. We want a rather wide circle of heat because I want to grain not through the repair material, I want to regrain the original vinyl. So I want my heat to extend out in a way. It's nice if a line of grain comes from the original vinyl right through the repair area. That's the way to totally hide it. This is one reason why I never use a reducer tip on my gun. So after that round of touch-ups, we're ready for another close look at our progress. And I just saw that from the passenger side, you still see a little bit of mark here. So I'm drying it down and getting ready to fill in that line one more time. And for any heat cured repair material, since we drive the plasticizers to the surface, we want to clean and prep to remove as much of this surface plasticizer as possible. Since the plasticizer tends to be an oily substance, it will repel a water-based finish unless we take our proper prep steps. Here's a little color wipe in. And as is so typical, once you fix the big damage, now the little damages appear. You overlooked them before. So we're just going to do a little touch up, trying to keep this to a minimum, this little spot up here. While we're touching that up, you can notice that you don't see those cracked lines of the vinyl. We see what a nice job that mesh did to bridge all of those gaps and how important it was to get a lot of heat on there in order to form that structure to the proper contour. Now we're ready to put on some color. 
I am using a water base paint, about 20% black pigment to the base, and we added cross linker as well. And I'm going to use what I typically use, a satin finish for most automotive products. And by using the hair dryer along with the heat gun, I'm able to put on multiple coats in quick succession. As you can see, each coat is a very light coat in this instance. You'd think the guy could spare about $15 and get him a new hair dryer, wouldn't you? But it would look about that dirty again after about two weeks. If you'll notice in that seam line, there is a small crack. I can choose from a variety of products to put in there. A flexible super glue works well sometimes. I happen to have at hand a thin air dry filler, so that's what I decided to pick up and, and put there. We'll put a couple layers of that, dried between layers. The idea is just not to attract any attention to our repair area later on. Here again, feel free to use your guitar pick to clean that line out. Well, that's all we have on this one, folks. I hope it helps you to see the need to put plenty of heat in some of these automotive vinyls in order to get the desired results. Thanks for watching.